And then the kind of seminar people we will be having lunch in the cafeteria. Yeah, that's it. Everything is inside. Immunity means inside. 
What you believe outside is unpacked it already inside. For example, the ghost, well, the God, the soul, actually is already within the life itself. And transcendental way of thinking is the outcome of this, something new beyond life. And so immanent way of thinking is part of transcendental thinking, but transcendental way of thinking uh, well, so it doesn't include human, but part of human. For example, this is, this is uh, let's say, a classroom here. So everything is within the class. That's very imminent way of thinking. But the problem is who defines the inside? You got to get outside first. And that's the way uh, those transcendent, imminent way of thinkers are. <coughs> Foucault or Deleuze, they don't believe something outside life. Everything is pure immanent within the life. Even the concept of God is produced by human being. And that's the two way of thinking. And the easiest way to look at this two way of thinking is from these pictures. See? We have uh, the two representatives of transcendence figures here. They are in us. And they can go back to so I Hegel's comes and Plato, while those and Foucault as two representative of of England, and goes back to Bergson's Nietzsche's where Bergson talk about vitality in life, and Nietzsche built power in life, and Leibniz and Spinoza, they are kind of believing life itself as evidence. So, but Heidegger is the only one, according to our conference, who has a combination of the both. It's not just dark science, you talk about some sort of, well, transcendental phenomenon, but not the kind of, uh, there is nothing waste from perspective ethic. Okay, this is a picture of the two tra trajectory of modern philosophy of life. The reason our conference point us, it is modern philosophy of life. Because he doesn't want to include those analytical philosophy. They don't talk about life, they talk about uh, way of thinking or logic or mathematics. Okay, uh, this is actually from BBC uh, YouTube, a BBC documentary film. It lasts almost 50 minutes, and I don't, I took it only for uh, one minute or two minutes. I'm not sure it's working, but I'll be trying before the lectures. Let me try again. Okay, here we go. The human face. Okay, uh, if you want to, to know 
about what is the phase, you can go uh, to YouTube, it's almost 48 minutes about the study from scientific and social cultural perspective of uh, the notion of the phase. Okay, by definition, I'm going to talk about what is the phase, what is our function of phase. This is not... I think I changed. Okay, it's so, alright. By definition, the phase is from parts of the eight, including uh, forehead, eyes, nose, and mouth, cheeks, and chin. Each phase is unique in its own way. A phase of a human being, therefore, in the data, and individuals, person. Beside the phase can express feelings, thoughts, behind the phase, that phase. It is part of the signifying system that is different from that of written and spoken language. We all have faces, and our face is unique, but uh, to the Lutz and Devinas. The Lutz and Fortale believe that faces are not best for the individual, with those is individual. Okay? But to both philosophers, they don't believe face is the individual. They define, the Lutz and Fortale define zone of frequency and probability. It is a field that neutralizes in events and expression or connections unnatural to the obvious significations. They must also believe that the face doesn't belong to any individual. It is a universal side of ethic and transcendence. It expresses itself. That is, the face is the universal message in the face-to-face -face encounter with the other. To see a face is already to hear. Use Lausanne's and hear Lausanne's to hear social justice. That's what Devinas says. So the purpose of my talk is attempt to examine uh, the rules, immanent space and Levinas transcendental face respectively, and then to explore the subtle relation to this two modes of face. Okay, let me start with the losing the losing idea of the face. In year zero, facility, the losing what time we trace on the face. They point out, actually, well, the losing and Guattari only want to uh, talk about face in this book, uh, Thought of Plato, this chapter, and also in cinema, a little bit on cinema as well. But uh, to Levinas, face is almost everything in his work. But uh, at least they both talk about the same topic, so I use this to explore uh, two different kinds of philosophy in the contemporary uh, world now. They point out that there are three traditional roles with which the faith are usually associated. It is individual and individual teams. It's, it, it's, it's which distinguishes each person. The se second one, socializing, is manifest a social role. So you are the father, the daughter, you are the Chinese, you are the Briton. And the relational is ensures not only the communication between the two people, but also in single person. In the middle identities, in internal agreements between his character and his roles. They argue that the face doesn't just indicate an individual or express feeling or idea in these traditional senses, rather, it opens up the world as an, as an experience of possibility, which is quite similar to the Vinatan perspective, but they open up to the world as different kinds of world. That is through the system of signification of the white wall, this metaphor they use, and subjectification of the black hole as abstract machine of faciality produce our faces. I'm going to show you the pictures later after I finish the reading of this passage. This facial machine codes, decodes, and overcodes our faces. So there are a lot of codes in our, on our face. Each individual face has its codes. Um, with social formations and predetermined system of meaning and values, its last open determines our identity as the subject, since it is performed by a certain assemblage of powers in our society. The Lutheran Watani believe that our faces are products of this political faciality machine. Therefore, the question to be asked of a face as 
Richard Russell says, it's not what does a face represent, but rather what can a face do. Okay, here's the pictures in the rules in Gautama and for, um, The concept is simple. We, the face includes two parts. One is the white wall. This is the white wall. And the black hole, the eyes, the black hole. The white wall indicates system of signification, and the black hole indicates system of subject applications. And this is the, the simplest machine in, in, in the society, uh, the white wall and the black holes. The white wall is always spent, and, and black holes function repeatedly. Well, one wall actually is the very one data data ground on which we can interpret the codes on our faces. The so, but why is it white? Because he wants to attack, attack this kind of white or uh, ancient way of racism. And we believe Jesus face as the typical uh, white face, the, the, the modern role model of white face. And the black holes as it's like uh, in, in the Kangen idea of dustbin in the real, as it's always repeats, it's the eternal thing. All the face meaning fall into the black hole. Um, on the white face, and it all goes to the black holes. And show you next pictures. Yes. Uh, for example, the face we, every one of you wear one face. Me too, we have the genders, race. Rationality, ethnicity, we have different, and even age. Sometimes we have thousands of ways of expression on your face. And each face, the meaning of each face, has to go down to the back of And this is the celebratory machine. It's a machine, when you talk about machine, you're talk, talking about uh, assemblage. For example, who you are is, 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 is part of assemblage where you go. If you uh, different life stage. For example, if you go to the Harvard and or you go to local university, the Harvard is a, it's a machine. You connect your life to the machine after four years, and if you connect to local university after four years, you have different product outcome of the machine. Are you with me? The machine is not only a metaphor, it's metonymous. It's a system. It's a network of society. You connect that network of society to produce different you. A few years. So we come here, the seminar is assemblage because we have different people from different corners of the world. We get together, assemblage, and after one week, we produce a new self. And that concept the machine comes from. It's imminent, it's machine of design. You have that self accidents. You want to be a better person, so you want to connect. But all the subjectivity all go back down to the eternal lake of the black hole. Um, that's the first machine. The second machine is the couple machine. See, so you have a gender here. You have lady, gentleman years, and then you have face of the women and face of the men. You have couple. Um, you can have the master and students, you can have speaker and audience, and they all go down to the black box. Um, so there are different kind of uh, complex machines. Um, they all go down to black hole, but this is another uh, this is not the not picture, but this is the two parts of the machine. Two main operations of the facial machine, our face, actually it's a machine. It's not only express your feelings and ideas, it express your subjectivity, who you are, your identities. Collecting to buy you know, verbal units, women and men, or foreigners and, and, and local people, or you, the beauty like the face of Jesus Christ, James just mentioned, you have the transcendental face, which is beauty and peace. But the agony, the suffering face of Jesus Christ being uh, crucified uh, moments, they will be imminent face. And they all connect to this kind of happy, unhappy face. We are sad and um, not we are happy, exciting face. So it's all about connecting and making choice in your life because there's always a possibility what kind of face you want to have in every morning you wake up. Uh, this is the, the final picture. I think it's very interesting to 
to show the rules and for target idea of the face. The face is the, the simple machine. This is face of virtual, virtual part of the, the face. That means we have the actual face. Each one of you have the actual face. But beneath the actual face, there's a virtual face, which is this simple machine. And this simple machine has been coded and overcoded for a thousand years as a human being. American, Chinese, you have Jew, you have also identity which already has meaning, has value inside, inside the machine of the society. Uh, this is a simple machine, the virtual part of every face is beneath your face. But each face has its boldness and each face has its connection. The bolder effect, the multiple bolder effect is how you look at your face. So you have the same face, actual one face. One uh, one face, but uh, I think Stephen once said, when you get into your 40, you got to be responsible for your face. That mean you got to be uh, responsible for face you are wearing now, because it has bolder effect. You smile, people smile back, and that's the bolder effect you produce on your face. Um, the full eyes machine is two people's machine. So you and your wife, or you and your husband, you and your lover, or teacher and students, and we have eye to eyes. Human relations start from the two persons relationship, and that two person relationship for eyes machine to the Lutheran Quartari. And then comes to this, this one kind of uh, connection, and this is an, another connection. For example, if this year I will be this one, because I'm Stephen now, and Jen was this one in the last talk. And everybody of you here is here. I do talk it now, so everybody look at me. So we have eye contact and we produce the sentence to you. And this is unique because if I dismiss the class or dismiss the talk, everybody go out and come back, we will be different kind of assemblage, different kind of mood, virtual parts of life, different kind of way of sitting, probably change the chairs. So to the loose and Guatari, there's always multi uh, proliferation of eyes by multiple uh, occasion of all the same connection. So each connection produces new you as a subject. And um, it depends on how you want to connect and how you choose to become who you are. So we can see the Lutheran Quartaris, the idea of faith is very empirical in a sense. But empirical not as an individual experience, but as a collective experience as a kind of virtual part of the life. So, two questions of dismantling the face. They are not uh, agreeing this kind of face machine we are having now. They actually want to detailize, use their term, the face. And to dismantle the face or the detailization of the facial machine, number one, you got to break through the white wall, signification, that's the dimension about the resistance, the issue of resistance. Uh, they talk about white and how to get out of the black hole of subjectivities. We all find uh, pursue the meanings or values in life within the network of established by the societies or by the facial machines. And um, the Rute Kotari believe that find your black holes and white holes, know them, know your faces. It is the only way you will be able to dismantle that and draw your line of flight. To me, this is very difficult and very difficult. Number one, that means you got to know your power relation. Your face, the position of your face in the power relation. Number one, so you got to know your face. And number two, you got to know how you can uh, play the role of the face in, in a more uh, effective or affirmative way. That means you got to challenge this kind of coded or territorialized identity in the society. You can try to dismantle or to, to undermine the kind of facial machines long established in our society. And that's you can draw the line of flight from the facial machine we are having nowadays. Okay, so at the end of the article, they point out actually there are three states of the facial machine. 
and the face is political machine. The face is political. It's not only to Levinas, it's ethical. To the new thing about army, face is political. The, the face as political machine always make us approach the world of need. Number one, the humanity head. The humanity head is the, the head, the face. They will look outside and it's outside. I mean, imagine in back to the thousand years ago, if it is human being in the tribe, they will see the outside, it's outside, from outside, complete, totally strangers. And that's where we quickly decay. And for quite space, you will see everything within the face. I mean, a human face become a unity, the same. But within the same, is hierarchical power relations. And then, you need a pocket. This is quite similar to we discussed yesterday, but uh, when, when Levinas talked about uh, Heidegger's, Heidegger's idea of gripping by hand. Gripping by hand is your power to, to understand, to control the world. Actually, Heidegger, when Heidegger talked about the difference between monkey and human being, or animal and human being, he talked when he, actually, he did one example, when, when the monkey grabs a banana, Actually, the banana, banana is a banana, it's a food, only the relationship. But when human being grasp banana, it's a banana that signifies of the network of the whole world. You understand the world through the grasping of banana. Properly you understand it's not only the food, it's, it's as tropical countries fruits, you understand bananas is exported to the country also. Well you can understand the bananas relation of the world. So they must challenge this kind of ontological way of understanding the world, grasping by hand. It's trying to say the groping, the groping the hand in the in the in the in the layer, layer is, you ask, you're not sure the unknown area, you always groping. Groping by hand is quite similar to the losing what they call the pole head. The pole head is the face trying to explore the new possibility in the world. Trying to Detailized or terrorized identity on the face. And that's uh, the Luzen Guattari's idea of the face and their challenge to the face. So, to learn, the face is very political. It's a machine, it's an imminent machine of life. And facing the penalty, ethical penalty, will be living us. Uh, while the Luzen Guattari tried to dismantle the face in terms of politics, let me ask attempt to universalize the face in terms of everything. For let me ask that the face precedes life experience. They mean transcendence, precedes imminence or unconscious. And in terms of either significance or subject application, it is derived from the transcendent art that is otherwise than being. And thus give the quietity to the concept of justice and responsibility. In difficult freedom, they not state to look at a look is to look at something which cannot be abandoned or free, but something which and as you is involved looking at the face, the face of the other. In other words, a face we see is the face to face, this is not right, face to face encounter with the other person reminds us system of the absolute part, the face of the infinite, infinity of God. Facing the face of the other is the self, is only a helpless passage. In the last word, the face of the other illustrates multiple meaning, such as the demand of justice, absolute alternatives, the only access to God. In general, I actually uh, opens up the seven features of the United face. Number one, the infinity. We talk about uh, the last few days. In terms of time, it's infinite. It cannot be comprehended, it cannot be grasped because it's infinity. So the other is God in terms of infinity. It not, cannot be fully comprehended by human logic. And sensibility, because it's, it's, it precedes the thinking. We, we, we understand, the, we, we feel compassion for the suffering, not because we think. Not because our parents told us so, or not because the society has us to have compassion and suffering because we have sensibilities. And responsibility is the, the very side of, of 
responsibility is the face of the others. And vulnerability, proximity, passivity, and next energy. Well, this, uh, let me pick up one. Passivity is because where's well, the very foundation of uh, the, uh, the, the ethic, and we cannot do any, we cannot be. Unlike the Ludwig Matami, we have this kind of weird power things. You got the affirmative and active. To let us, the ground is something you cannot choose. You are already late, your life is on the ground. And proximity because it's always next to you. The language starts not from a uh, kind of science system, but it's because we need to talk to the neighbor, we need to talk to people around us. So ethics is always near you, close to you. And um, that's something about the Mahatma's ideal face. Uh, besides, in terms of, I will talk about in terms of space and, and language. The face which uh, allegedly shows uh, diaconies in the globe, uh, in Latin, I mean, the divine art is the, the third, in, in the highest, says Zenas, using the spatial metaphor to dissolve the space, because no change in the quantity of times will affect the uh, super, superlative. Now, if the face is non spacious, it is not so for being outside space, but because within the space, it is the origin and ordering of the space. Therefore, the not space can be the trace of the infinite. I mean, uh, when, we can, when we see the face of the art, it actually is not the true face of the art. It's actually the face is already, always already the trace of the face of the art. You cannot see the dark god directly, you cannot see the infinity directly because you are finite. So that's in terms of the height and, and space. Um, finally, in terms of language, the face signifies language of an ethical imperative. During the interview, they will not suggest whether potential for language is pre, uh, re -pre requisite for being in a phase to which you require the beginning of language. Which is not the sign, is in the face as the same prior to the same, as a demand for my response, as invocation of my responsibility to respond. That is, let me not suggest that there is a language of the face, a language of eyes before all rhetoric, before du duplicities in sign relations. To see the face is to speak of the world. That's the Leninist language. The face speaks, they not say it without speaking, such as Lao Chiu not kill. The language of Lao Chiu not kill is always already inside our, our soul or inside our humanity. We don't need any kind of language to speak of this. Here's my pictures. I try to uh, put all complicated ideas of living us in, into the visuality. <laughs> so I'm, I'm risk the the dangers and the risk to, risk to reduce the richness and, and otherness of living up and death into the, the art. But it's worth taking, I believe, in terms of communication. Okay, here's the uh, here's living up idea of the face. There are two kinds of face. As the subject, there's a face always haunting, like ghost. It's always demanding to do something. You have a sense of guilt, you have compassion for the for the suffering others. And um, that's the one, the face in your everyday life. You got a face. And that's the face. That's the ground of your subjectivity. It's who you are. It's without the ground, you are not who you are anymore. You are not human being anymore. That's being as hostage. And that's the face as, as the very primordial relation with yourself. Um, to me, so here's the face of the other always facing. And the subject is helpless, hopeless hostage. Ethical relationship between the other and, and the self. Ethical precedes on how ethic precedes on how the other is absolute and infinite to live us. Okay, I finished my explanation of two different modes of face from the Lutz I perspective and the Lutz perspective. Now, I want to look at if any. If, if, if it is possible to, to see any subtle relation or complex relation between the two, or because in 
The Agamben's point of view, the two are different kind of world. One is believing in within, the other is believing in without. Okay, so and so in the losing what in the, the losing question of desires to wood and imminent theory of ethic, the Daniel Smith points out that what's an ethic of imminence we are criticize then is anything that separates modern existence from its power of acting, the real power. And what separates us from our power of acting is our modernity, the, the illusion of transcendence. Accordingly, this is the point of that separates the loose most from the ethical thinking of uh, Levinas, that the great philosopher of transcendence. So, in terms of poverty, both Levinas and the loose, in terms of faith, they, they are kind of, there's a possibility of uh, closeness, proximity, they are kind of alliance, they attack this kind of long established. Uh, social code in the society. Um, but in terms of ethic, there's a moment of departures. And so after examining the rules in human space and let us transcend the face respectively, I will agree that ethic or let us is divided from the art beyond, where transcendence uh, should be demons. Uh, oh okay, yeah. Where transcendence for the rules. Is what's in it. Yeah, what's in Because the loose don't, don't like transcendence. The loose is what in ethic, which is derived from the immanent relation of being to being, that's labeled their existence. Well, I try to argue, however, that the subtle and complicated relationship between the immanence and transcendence is, is relative, or even intersecting in some ways, not optics, like black and white binary realizations. According to their life and uh, Gregory Basson, uh, a double blind, I won't, I won't use the concept double blind, and, and I will show a picture to, uh, to, to, to explain my ideas, is an obvious or an emotionally distressing dilemma in communication in which an individual or group receive two or more conflicting messages, in which one message negates. This creates a situation in which successful response to one message results in failed response to the other, and vice versa. So that's a person, the person will be automatically wrong regardless of response. response. The double line occurs when the person cannot confront the in inherent dilemma and therefore cannot resolve is out, out of the situations. So here's my my um, argument most specifically. If we only look at the face from the loser's perspective, perspective, the face is black hole, black hole and, and white wall, we might not be able to sense, because sensibility is very important, it's, it's human, to be human you have to have sensibilities. Our compassion, uh, compassion with the poor, the suffering others, one us. However, we only, if we only look at the face from Bergner's perspective, we might not be able to desire potential capacity and effectivity of the face in life itself. In short, the human face has to be, to me, one of imminent desire of self excellence one of trans transcendence in care of the others, not only shaping our faces here and now, but also producing a face to come. Everybody of you here, we all have face to come. And um, consequently, finding all human faces is labeled singular rural communities. We are here at singular, singular, there's singularity in the face. It's very definitely not a concept, universal, ethical demand of face, but there's plural, we have individual faces. So these are the pictures on uh, African Panthers. I, I, Always to, to show my idea. We always this is our face. A baby is growing because it's coming. And we have one face of the one face of the roots. <laughs> well, I, I don't. This is again dangerous. You you run, you, you risk the, 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 uh, the difference between the two things. But well, personally, I believe we have uh, the care of the other, and we have. 
the desire to excel excellence. Um, the force is in one similar way of desire, the other is transcend, transcendent way of desires, internal fix. So my conclusion is, somehow, those two data accounts virtually attack uncomfortable genesis and social normalization of the fix. Yes, we've got to give credit for both of them. They all try to throw absent fix to dilute and autonomy with the virtual fix. Beneath every actual phase. To let me ask with the ethical phase beneath all the uh, untouchable phase. So, the absolute phase, but the, the idea of absolute are different beneath the phase, and therefore pursue what can be called a phase of becoming others. But if one is imminent others, the other is transcendent others. And in their own way, the former's privilege the idea of becoming, while later emphasizes the idea of others. Uh, it is as the policy level we can see the possible creative percentage between the root and evidence in terms of the face. But immediately it is as ethical level we see the point of radical departures between two great thinkers and the differences are too sharp to me and too active to reconcile. My conclusion is both the roots and the philosophies of the face have their own strength and limits. A human face is always already double bound by both the roots human face and the Nazi transcendent face. A real face to unfold life in itself and compassion face to care for the others. This dark line face signifies an unconscious space um, for potential ethical negotiation of humanity. With such negotiation, our faces can help us to reshape the world new in better form, I believe. So keep smiling on your face. Thank you.
the compassion phase requires the will phase. Sure. And, uh, and uh, in, in that sense, uh, that is in two senses. One, as the, the, the thing that you have to overcome in some way to get to the compassion phase, it's the resistance uh, to the compassion. But on the other hand, it's required by compassion, the will phase. That is, you can't have, um, you can't be compassionate to the other without machines. That is, you need trains to bring food to the rural areas that are flooded uh, and, and need uh, food, resources. Uh, you need bandages, etc. So, so you end with this kind of double bind, but uh, it seems to me that it's not exactly a double bind. That is, one, one side is, uh, is able to get to the other, and one side isn't. But that's, that's what I would Okay, yeah. actually, your question is about the question of priorities. It's not a matter of uh, black and white who is wrong, who is right, who is wrong. It's a matter of uh, degree who comes first. So, in Levinas' ethic before, it was uh, precise ontologies. Feelings, sensibility, precise thinking. So, uh, you, you have that kind of uh, other or native way of compassion in your life. So, Without this kind of other or native compassion in your life, the real life is not real, it's not ethical life. The problem is, uh, well, to me, it's both Deleuze and Levinas are great thinkers. To me. They, 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 I, don't, I think this is two thinkers that they're going to uh, uh, still extend their influence in the 21st century. People have Deleuze conference, Levinas conference everywhere. And so people are just talking about the blues in it. I think that's the reason because one is uh, the blues. When you talk about the, the blues, you, you have that kind of uh, life deep inside you. It's not for the art, but for to to make most of your uh, day. And you want to create the best mode of yourself. And that is very common way of thinking, especially in the United States. You look at the self-help books, how to produce the self model of yourself in the world, in the, your life journeys. And that's a collective humanity to me. And it doesn't have to relate to the, that kind of transcendental artists to, to think that way. Um, but transcendental artists offer something further, uh, something beyond the real face, the mean compassion face. So it's a matter of drawing the boundary to one, if you stand here and you have the absence, virtual parts of your life, and the lose will, will just draw the boundary within the life, nothing outside life. For example, this event happened. To us, actual, actual parts of the event is the number of people and the place, but there's virtual part of events to the lose is why you are here. And there's so many energies goes around, but why are you here? Did you pay attention to the talk to Jen and to me, or did you think about anything? That's the virtual part of life, which is also fascinating. And it doesn't have to go with the other. It's go deep into yourself. And that's why people like to read the news in some sense. But, uh, but once you think about the, the relation with the other, I think the transcendental way of thinking goes a little bit further. I think lots of further. It's beyond the kind of life things. I would say uh, it's, it's both talk about the absence of life. One is within life, but it's absence, it's virtue. The other is going to be young, but both are absence. They cannot be proved scientifically. They don't have absence. So no matter the rules or Levinas, fundamentally, have something cannot be um, proved by evidence, um, but that's the beauty of us. And, and they have different way of thinking. But I just, as a human being, I, I, I have this kind of two face always. Sometimes I want to be work harder to be. You have the kind of desire of self excellence. So that's why you you, you study hard. You burn the night candles to, to finish paper or something. And this is very delusive because you want to have position in your uh, academic areas, and, but it's a, it's a professor's. Um, but you also see people around you. That's also everyday life. 
So you have the kind of ethical cues. So to me, it's a matter of drawing the boundary with some. Sometimes I just draw the boundary within the rules in the world. Sometimes I go beyond and the both are intersecting in my everyday life as a human person, person to me. So that's why I like webinars. I've been working on webinars for 60 years project now. And I'm, actually this is one of my papers. I, I'm producing one book on webinars called Responding to the Art of Rethinking Webinars and divided into two sections. The first section talks about fundamental idea of webinars ideas. The second one is dialogue, webinars with the art of contemporary philosophy. The rules, David Dahl, and Zizek, and this is one, another one is Confucius, New Confucianism. I talk about low ethic in terms of uh, the Nazi perspective and New Confucius perspective. So I, I try to engage David engage David Nazi to other art, his others. I think there's much more David Nazi than talk about David Nazi within the David Nazi. That's my point of view. I hope this <laughs> can answer your question. Hey Paul. Okay, okay, I'll be. The body of the news in the case of the class. I think the body to face is, I'm not sure whether that is that easy. Because firstly, the news and the body is always a product of inscriptions made on it by culture and society. Whereas, face is always translating on all those inscriptions. And uh, uh, the question the use and the is how to make yourself a body without organ by probably erasing these cultural inscriptions mm -hmm. by making kinds of light. And uh, one issue uh, that discuss the use and the from the is that the body is connected or can be connected not to other human bodies but myriads types of organisms of the world, plants, yeah. water, stars, everything and, the, and the, uh, by which desire can be produced. Whereas Venus uh, strictly contains himself to the human body. And uh, that is one thing and, uh, and uh, uh, however the face is always about this and un unalloyed by, by any of this and that's why you need this cultural sort of contamination mm -hmm. and uh, that is one thing and uh, uh, probably one the one converging point in both the winners and the loose maybe with regard to desire. Both of them speaks of a, of a desire that is not the product of lack of need, but of fullness. Mm -hmm. But the difference is, uh, in Levinas, the desire is always the desire for the other human journey. Mm -hmm. can be fulfilled upon only in a, in a human level, but in the news it is uh, and the handy of in some entities. The whole world is the passage of the So so there is some risk when you compare with the Okay. Uh, I've been asking the issue of body and desires and which is very interesting to me because uh, I believe the loops and webinars are close to each other when they come conscious to the idea of uh, psychoanalysis, especially Lacanian. Because Lacanian ideas the, the desire is eternal link the real task thing, you never fulfill your designs because there's always uh, one closed leg in, in your classes and there's always one zero leg in your saving account and so you work hard, so you do the job always the eternal leg is there, but uh, con uh, contrast to the eternal leg, desire is the eternal leg the roots and the webinars that both believe actually desire is over, the overflow, it's a surplus so it's not passive to echo that the, the eternal link is always go beyond, go other, go go toward others, just the different kind of others. But in this sense, they are they are quite close, they are aligned. But in terms of desire and in terms of body, but once they go out, the, the eternal link becomes uh, surplus, but the 
different kind of support, one's imminent support, one's transcendent support. Um, one's care about life itself and care about the others. But they both are kind of uh, kind of fighters challenging against the kind of desire as a link. So they don't they both don't like psychoanalysis actually. <laughs> In a sense they are friends. Okay, I think Paul. Um, first of all, I would like to uh, uh, thank you for your speech. Um, in the, uh, from a Heideggerian perspective, um, uh, there is a mechanical phase which reaches the pinnacle of the loss of uh, um, human essence. Um, I mean, I, I, I can't think about uh, more radical uh, depersonalization, dehumanization, than to put, than to understand the face through a machine. I mean, usually what we do is uh, we put faces on everything. We we put faces on cars. We put faces on objects. We personify everything in order to come to terms with with uh, the world around us. Um, I think we can say that the, the biggest problem when it comes to uh, techno, when it comes to techno, is that we tend we we, uh, uh, we tend to understand ourselves uh, starting from the objects surrounding us, and we tend to understand our our essence uh, in terms of the objects surrounding us. And what that does, what uh, Deleuze does, is precisely that what is mostly the, what is the most criticized in Heidegger. And I have to agree with Heidegger on that and with uh, Professor Cohen. Uh, secondly, uh, secondly um, I, think, I think it's important to say that, um, um, that the idea that we could build a face, it's that we by, by ourselves could build ourselves could build a face, is very problematic. Because, uh, and we, we have discussed yesterday about it, we don't have a face. We don't have a face. I don't have a face. Not yeah, I, I, I don't have a face. We have faces. faces. But what, what, what does this mean? This means that, that in order to get a face, in order to receive a face, we, have, we, we need the other. The, by looking at us, the other gives us a face. Our face is the gift of the other. So to, to, to think about a, to, 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 to think about a way to construct a face, to analyze your face, uh, to uh, I don't know, to uh, better your face, it's it's uh, in my opinion nonsense. You don't see your face. We need mirrors to see our faces. We don't. I don't see my face right now when I'm speaking when I'm speaking to you. But I know you see my face, and I see your face. And this is very interesting because it's it's a it's a reciprocal relationship. You're my mirror in a way, and I'm yours. We see each other. I don't see you. I, I see myself in you. And this is what makes me myself. It's not me trying to construct a face that can that can better come to terms to you. I cannot I cannot construct a face on my own. I I, I badly need you and the others to construct my face to to receive my face as a gift. Well, I complete. Agree with you. It's very than nothing interpretation of the face. So well, <laughs> what's wrong with that? This is very than nothing. Yeah, we don't. I don't have face because the other has face. And one thing I like to point out is singularity of the face important to the difference. Although that's if I don't have face, but uh, the I also have the singularity of the face inside I. That's why you can understand the importance of face of the others. So I'm not, I don't believe uh, the, the uh, let us deny the face of the I. The face of the I is part of singularity or universality of the face, actually. But it's just, I just cannot see it by myself. I can see through the faces of the other. But Otherwise, if I, I have no face, uh, then the face is not, not, not singular, there's no singularity in the third person or in, 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 the, in the face, that's capital F, because it's got to cover the kind of face. But the I you're talking about is kind of 
subjectivity, it's not the actual things. The, the problem is that when you put it like this, you, ne you negate the transcendence of the face. I don't, I don't see the face of the other because I know I have a face. I have a face because I see the face of the other, and because the face of the other sees me. So what you try to what what you were trying to do is to reduce this transcendence of the face to the imminence of my face. You, you try to understand the face of the other in terms of my face. I have a face, so I know how is it like to have a face. I can understand that the other has a face. And I I, I respect the other and I, I, uh, I have a moral obligation toward the other. But I don't think this is this is how it works. I think that I think that I have my face because the other gives me my face. And this is Again, I completely agree with you in the Luminatic sense. Yeah. Uh, I'm not speaking in the Luminatic sense. I'm uh, trying to make sense of all of this. But the Luminatic sense it makes sense because we do have that kind of the care, the compassion for, for, the, for the suffering of other people around us. That's down to earth humanity. That's a very fundamental humanity. As a human being, you have that kind of instinct feelings. As a human, I'm not sure as an animal because, well, in a sense, we are animals. <laughs> but, 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 but where is the nurse? I mean, I hear you say that. I agree with you. Mm -hmm. But where is this in the nurse? Well, the nurse will have different way of thinking. They believe everything, even the concept of other within the life. But you know, we're talking about uh, the ethics of the nurse. So, so how about that? Well, I think the nurse. The, the loops, uh, well, one thing to conclude my, my talk. The loops were still believe uh, we need to feed the needy others, but not because there's transcendental relation with the other, but because there's this self, the self excellence of life. Because this self excellence of life to feel the needy others. So, this different perspective. Um, so, he not say um, I got to be selfish. I, I feed the other because I feel bad. I think it's, uh, this excellence is the desire. It's, it's yeah. the desire to get together to myself. Yeah, that, that's from the losing sense, yes. That's why the lose actually the, the lose committed suicide. Like Nietzsche went crazy. The lose committed suicide because of when he, he jumped out from his apartment. He said, I feel like a chained dog. When he got sick, he lied on the bed. He had half the oxygen on his face. And he committed suicide, jumped out the window because life became miserable to him. There's no real to power anymore. And if you can say, I feel like a chain dog, because life is not the life he expected, like real to power in chains, affirmative way of life. So there's limits of the losing way of thinking, I already admit. But, but there's this kind of feeling is there. Everybody has this kind of, uh, you want to, to obey the persons. But in the best person, it's not, it's, it's ethical it is. Not everyone has these words. Not everyone has them. Okay, but this is fundamental, well, we are to life. It's not, uh, I want to survive, I want to be alive. And that's fundamental energy of life to the lose in Maybe we should stop. <laughs> <laughs> we can continue this conversation. Yes, yes, yes. Or the way to call us. Yeah, for, okay. Yeah, like, like,